Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. William Penn once said, time is what we want most, but what we use worst. Most humans spend about 80 years on this earth, and 26 of those years were asleep. Sadly, some of us spend another seven years trying to fall asleep. We need that sleep so we can safely get to work for another 13 years of our lives. Here's a sobering thought. 11 years looking at all our screens. Four and a half years of eating. Romance is not dead, but maybe it's on life support. Just 395 days in a lifetime. A British version of these statistics says one full year will be spent in pubs. Eight years shopping and more than a year in traffic jams. And turning our attention now to just one of those years, or 525,600 minutes. Do you remember the musical Rent? I was astonished that 26 years have flown by since it opened in New York. You might remember these lyrics from Seasons of Love, my favorite song from Rent. 525,600 minutes. Thank you. (laughs) I don't sing solos. (laughs) 525,600 minutes. 500. 25,000 moments so dear. How do you measure, measure a year? In daylight, in sunsets, in midnights, in cups of coffee, in inches and miles, in laughter and strife, in 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year in a life? How about love? Measure in love, Seasons of love, measure your life in love. How do you figure a last year on earth? Figure in love, figure in love, measure in love, seasons of love. Jonathan Larson composed this song and the whole musical, the 11th longest running show in Broadway history but didn't live to see any of its success. The night before the preview performance, Larson went home and made a cup of tea. He would never get to drink it. He died quite suddenly that night, which was also just 10 days before his 36th birthday. But with his family's blessing, The cast and the show somehow went on, performing on the day of his death in the midst of their grief and loss and shock. As we all know, but seem to regularly forget, life is fragile and life is unpredictable. We seem to operate as if we all have unlimited time. One of the saddest parts of my job as a hospital chaplain is how frequently someone says to me, I thought I had more time. A 98-year-old woman said that to me recently, too. I thought I had more time. Sometimes it's a patient sharing these words, 
and sometimes it's a family member or a friend. Almost universally, they wish they had spent more time with their loved ones and less time at work. They wish they had offered the most important people in their lives more of their love instead of keeping it for themselves. They wish they had repaired relationships that had fallen apart, including the ones that fell apart for the most petty reasons. The relationships they still had regrets about. Sometimes they still have time, but more often they don't. I'm guessing that we could all lighten the regrets we carry with us. A cancer patient whose life was ending told me he had worked hard to have no regrets so he could be at peace as his death approached. He repaid $50 that he had borrowed decades before. He sent a note and a check to his friend. His friend didn't even remember the debt, but doubled it and donated to the American Cancer Society. The friend also had cancer. So most importantly, they reconnected and were supporting each other. When I asked his permission to share this story, he liked the idea and said it would be part of his legacy. He wanted all of us to face death as he did, from a place of peace. The late Unitarian Universalist minister Forrest Church was a prolific author. While he was dying, he wrote a book called Love and Death. Here is some of his wisdom. To be free to accept death is to be free, period. The courage we need comes before when we face our own demons or reach out across a great divide to touch hands. It is life work, not death work, but it pays great dividends down the line. So if you need to, put down that drink, or pick up that phone, or take that long postponed trip. You know what your unfinished business is. He continues, don't wait until it's too late to begin taking care of it. Death may come as a thief in the night, but cannot steal from you the love you have given away the strength you have shown in facing life's hardships, or the courage you faced in quitting your inner demons. In taking care of your unfinished business and in helping your loved ones take care of theirs, you can liberate yourself and them from suffering. Suffering that if you wait too long may one day become intractable written in indelible ink, darkening the pages of your life. Dr. Ira Bayok, formerly a physician at nearby Dartmouth-Hitchcock in New Hampshire, shares some practical tools for improving our relationships and our lives. In his book, The Four Things, he shares advice derived from a lifetime of taking care of seriously ill and dying patients. He says, comprising just 11 words, these four short sentences carry the core wisdom of what people who are dying have taught me about what matters in life. The four sentences are, please forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, I love you. When you love someone, even if you feel like you're stating the obvious, it's never too soon to say these 11 words, and you can't say them too often. None of us knows how much more time we have to live. I have met countless family members who wish they hadn't waited 
who wished they hadn't lost the chance to say what they held in their hearts when death came unexpectedly or faster than expected. And I'm guessing that many of us have that same regret. I end every call with my daughter by saying, I love you. If we get cut off, I call back, even if it is just to say, I love you. If anything happens to me, I want the last words she hears from me to be, I love you. When we know we are loved, even if we are separated from those we care about, we are strengthened and comforted. I sometimes hear family members say, with great pain in their voices, that someone, usually a parent, but not always, had never said, I love you. If you are a parent, you have time to leave a different legacy. Perhaps you come from a family where feelings were rarely shared. Perhaps you can be the one that changes this family pattern and gives the generations that follow a new legacy. When difficulties arise in our relationships, we sometimes put off doing what we need to do to repair our connections. I'm certainly guilty of this sometimes. We might assume we will have another chance later. This may or may not be true. Please forgive me and I forgive you can be the toughest of the four sentences to say, but the need to forgive and be forgiven simply means we aren't perfect. I like these words from Dr. Bayok about forgiveness. Many people confuse forgiveness with exoneration. Forgiveness does not excuse someone from doing something wrong. It doesn't lessen their transgression. Instead, forgiveness accepts the past as it was, embraces the present, and faces the future. Forgiveness is a strategy for each of us to lessen the amount of emotional baggage we carry around. I acknowledge that forgiveness is a process and can't be rushed or forced. It really deserves its own sermon. So for now, just a reminder that forgiveness can be the road to closer connections with the people who matter to us the most. Saying thank you is his fourth suggestion. At the end of life, people often need to know that they have made a difference. But why wait to tell the important people in your life that they are appreciated? Is there someone who made a difference in your life that you might thank sooner rather than later. I have a Thanksgiving ritual where I write to a few people just to say thank you. Often I had thanked them in the moment, but sometimes the impact and influence that a person has shows up later, or our perspective on their impact becomes clearer with time. May Sarton set aside Sunday mornings for her correspondence and called it her religious service devoted to friendship. When life is short, each moment becomes more precious. But we don't have to wait for death to approach to learn from this truth. None of us know how much time we have. Our best strategy is to live each day as fully as possible and to not delay letting people know how we feel about them. I invite you to join me as we stand together on the threshold of 525,600 new minutes this year 
to prioritize saying, I love you, forgive me, I forgive you, or thank you, and to find the peace that these words will bring us now and later. Then, as the cast of Rent reminds us, we can measure our new year in love, seasons of love, and celebrate a year in the life of friends. They also tell us we can forget regret or life is yours to miss. No other road, no other way, no day but today. And now for our benediction, I invite you to put your hands over your heart in namaste. I bow to the divine in you. These are the words of Andrew Pakala. As you prepare to leave this sacred space, pack away a piece of this church in your heart. Wrap it like a precious gem. Carry it with you through the joys and sorrows of your days. Let its gentle glow strengthen you, warm you, and remind you of all that is good and true until you gather here again in this place of love. Let us keep this faith and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Bless your hearts. Happy New Year. Amen. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.